What do you make of the infighting uh, amongst the players, uh, according to, you know, Golf Channel reported it yesterday, and uh, I read a, a, a story from The Telegraph uh, in uh, the U.K., saying that uh, Rory was in the room and um, was told to go F off by the 227th ranked player in the world who attempted to uh, tell Jay Monahan that he was a sellout and Grayson Murray. And he says he hates Liv and the Liv players think they're not going anywhere. How, how, do you, how, how does this all come together after 48 hours of infighting here? Yeah, right. no doubt the players feel, feel betrayed. Uh, I'm sure Tiger and Rory and Hideki Matsuyama and uh, because they were not included in the discussions of this deal. I listened to Jay Monahan's uh, interviews, and he talked about uh, the need for confidentiality as he was having these discussions. Uh, and, you know, I, I understand it, and tensions run high. And, you know, Roy's in a different position in that he's on the player policy board. He was one of five people on that player policy board, and he has pretty close ties to the power brokers that were making these deals. So he would have access to more information. So Rory might be looking two, three, four years down the road and thinking that this actually might be good for golf. And when I say it might be good for golf, I only mean good for golf given the state that it was in. Not good for golf what golf was 10 years ago or eight years ago, but the state that it was in with intractable legal issues going forward, hemorrhaging money and title sponsors who were stressed and likely wanting to get out of these $25 million purses because the ratings don't support them. So, you know, again, it's not unusual for tempers to flare in, in meetings, PGA tour meetings. I've been in many of them. I was on the player advisory council Mm -hmm. and, and tempers flare in those things and people get, you know, get their ire up. That's not unusual. So I, I don't make much of that. Uh, but, yes, the players would have felt betrayed. They would have felt because they weren't involved in these discussions. But really, in my view, the, the, the source of the betrayal goes back to the players that left for live. Because when they left for live, when those players left for live, and I would call it narcissistic greed, bloated consumption, and then the gloating that follows with it, they left for their personal benefit, not for the benefit of the game. Because if you look at the nature of professional golf, which is based upon, well, at least in the in the recreational way, it's it's based upon camaraderie. But in the professional sense, its its foundation is meritocracy and philanthropy. Well, that is hardly the foundation of live golf. So, if the PGA Tour has to compete with live golf, then its meritocratic aspects, its philanthropic aspects, uh, you know, come into question. They're going to have to bring in venture capital or private equity. And it's then up in the air whether or not they can even maintain their nonprofit philanthropic status, which is the very attraction of corporate America to golf, the meritocratic aspect and the philanthropic aspect of the PGA Tour. That is its appeal. And if it no longer has that appeal, then corporations may not want to align themselves with the PGA Tour because it is tainted by the affiliation with the unconscionable human rights atrocities of MBS. So when Bill Mickelson and Brooks Koepka and Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeChambeau all go to live, they are in the process of undermining the 100-plus years that it's taken for professional golf to get the reputation that it has. So the players may feel betrayed by Jay Monahan, but their real betrayal is not with Jay Monahan. It's with Phil Mickelson. It's with Bryson DeChambeau. It's with Brooks Kepka. It's with everybody that left for their own personal greed. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.